and welcome. Today will be a small tutorial on how to move the virtual drive for your Linux distribution you are using within WSL2. These virtual drives are labeled as VHDX files. I will be starting after you have a Linux distribution set up, and if you do not have one set up yet, then you can watch my previous video on how to do that. Now, a reason you might want to move these drives and why I had to move mine is because they are initially installed in your C drive. In my case, my C drive is fairly small, and these VHDX files can be quite large at 16 or more gigabytes. So I had to move mine off to make room. With that said, let's get started. First thing you want to know is whether you use an administrator user system like I do. If you do, then you will need to find out if the Linux distributions were set up under the administrator or under your user. If you follow my previous tutorial, they will be under your user. This is important to know because if you list registered distributions for WSL, there will be a different list between your admin account and your user account. If you are not sure, try opening a command prompt and typing WSL dash dash list dash dash all. If you do, you should see the distribution you want. Here I have one command prompt open under my admin and the other as my user. You can see that Ubuntu underscore M is not registered under my admin account, but it is my user account. Whichever prompt shows the distribution will be the one that you want to use in the next part, as the other prompt will not have your Linux distribution set up within it, so it will not know where to find the VHDX file. Now to move the distribution, first go to a drive that has enough room to hold it. For example, my distribution is 17 gigabytes, so I had to go to another drive since my C drive did not have 17 gigabytes available at the time when I moved it. It only had 10 gigabytes. So when you export, it exports to a tar file, and if there's no room, then that will fail. Then you will want to type WSL dash dash export, and then the distribution name you want to export, then the file name you want that export to go into. In my case, I exported Ubuntu, so my distribution name was Ubuntu, and the file name I chose was also Ubuntu, .tar. So that is what I typed in. Next, you want to create a directory that you want the VHDX file to be placed in when you re-import. I named mine Ubuntu underscore distro. Finally, you want to type WSL dash dash import the new distribution, so in my case, Ubuntu underscore M. The M is for the drive that it is in. The folder you want the VHDX file to be imported into, so in my case, Ubuntu underscore distro. And then finally, the tar file name. In my case, it was just ubuntu.tar. Once you run this, you can delete the tar file if you want, or you can keep it as backup. This is an easy way, if you want, to backup your Linux distributions on your Windows file system. So for example, you could run nightly builds, simply running WSL dash dash export, the distribution you want to backup. And then in the file name, you could potentially have a dynamic date added to the file name to have a backup for it. Once you have it imported, you are technically done and you could stop here and start working. However, there are some housekeeping things we want to do. When you relist all your distributions, you will see Ubuntu and Ubuntu underscore M now. You could leave the original, but for me I had to remove it because it was taking up too much space on my C drive and causing my computer to crash occasionally because it slowly ate up more space over time. I first had to set Ubuntu underscore M as the default, as the default distribution is always running in the background, so it can never technically be shut down. To do this, we want to type WSL s Ubuntu underscore M. Once you do this and have no terminals open into the Ubuntu distribution, you can then run WSL T Ubuntu to shut down that distribution. But since that distribution was installed using the Ubuntu app from the App Store, you have to delete the app to free up the disk space. You will not be able to associate your moved distribution, in this case Ubuntu underscore M, with that app. You can go to the control panel into programs, search for Ubuntu, and uninstall from there. And to enter into Ubuntu underscore M distribution, similar to how you did with the Ubuntu app, you will want to run WSL dash D Ubuntu underscore M and then dash user dash U user, which in my case, my user is Cory, so I would do dash U Cory. You could even create a batch script to be able to run that command easier just by clicking on the batch script to run it. There's also an option to pass one-off commands to this distribution. So for example, with uh, the, if you say want to start up a server in the morning, you could do WSL dash D Ubuntu underscore M dash U Ori. And then if you're running it in Docker, you could do Docker compose up in a certain directory. But 
The one thing to remember with that is those one-off commands, once they are finished, the terminal will close right after automatically, though so you will not be able to enter any more commands or see the output. Also, every time you enter your distribution this way, you will enter into the folder the command was run in. So for example, if you start from that batch file and the batch file was located on your desktop, then you will go into, you will start in the distribution under mount C, your user, and then desktop get to your user's home, then you can just type cd tilde inside of your terminal. Now if you have projects you are working on from the other distributions, and they should all still work, such as projects with git. However, Docker is different. Docker Compose was linked to a security file that may become unlinked, as mine did, which will make it so you could not build containers. If that is the case, then there are three options that you can try to fix that. One is to run the following command, which I will have in the description so you can copy and paste it. And this will relink this credential file into your user bin, so that way it should work. Then option two is to edit the docker config file with, in my case, vim, and then your home.docker.config.json. In this file, you need to you would need to change the creds store to underscore creds store. Option three is to remove that Docker config file altogether and use sudo in every Docker command. Like I said, all the three options you might have to try, but for me, option one was the one that worked. You may notice that if you're running development servers within Docker that they may fail with some sort of uninitiated error or unlinked library errors when you try to run them. If this is the case, then you will first need to go into those containers when they are running with sudo docker-compose run, then the name you give the container within the docker compose yaml file, and then dash backslash bin backslash sh. From there, you can run yarn or bundle or apt, whichever you would require, to install the libraries that get delinked. If the project itself gets delinked, like in my case, I had an Ember project that got delinked, then I had to run npm link ember cli force. This will relink it to work properly. After that, as an example of a library that then got delinked, uh, from the Ember project. One for me was post CSS library. And so to fix that, I then ran this yarn command, which then relinked its library, the post CSS library and all of its dependencies. And that fixed the problem. Once all that is done, you have now moved your WSL distribution and made sure that everything still works. You also have a new way of backing up these Linux distributions with WSL export. And with all that, I hope this helped you in some way, and thank you for watching.